Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. I'm Dr. Sylvia, a general practitioner and health educator with us to Health. Today we're talking about shrinking fibroids. So if you're looking at fibroids, what can you do? What can you take to shrink fibroids? You have you have clicked on the right video this um, morning or this afternoon, wherever you are. So let's just jump right into it. And I'm going to be sharing my screen. I'm going to take you through what fibroids are generally and then look at what are the options available? Remember that not one option fits everybody, okay? Remember that you have natural methods that people talk about and people use. You have the modern medical methods that people use. You have the modern surgical methods that people use and their traditional methods. There's a whole range, plethora, if you like, of different things that people use or talk about when we're talking about or when we're looking at fibroids shrinking shrinking fibroids so i'm going to start by sharing my screen welcome to the live stream if you're joining me say hello leave a comment ask a question it's always great to have different opinions we learn more we challenge ourselves so i'm just going to be sharing my screen just to put us in the context of what we're talking about today um, and here is just an example i wanted us to look at this is a large sized fibroid if you look closely at the tape it's about this is more than um, this is a womb with several different fibroids and the womb is enlarged about 15, 15, 16 centimeters. And you can see different types of fibroids um, along the um, along the body of the womb itself. Now, before we start looking at the um, before we start looking at the different options. OK, I want to talk about the types of fibroids that we have or that there are. Um, and just very, very simply, very simply, they are usually um, three different types that we refer to when we're talking about types of fibroids. Um, fibroids are benign growths of the womb, the muscle, specifically the muscle. The womb itself is made up of different layers. Let's not go into that. Um, one of the layers is a muscle layer. And fibroids, we know, grow from the muscle layer. They're benign, in which what by, by that we mean to say that it's not a malignant kind of growth. Um, but these benign growths can do a lot to cause plenty of problems. I'm going to talk about that in a few seconds. But different types of fibroids, we mean you can have fibroids that grow inside the muscle of the, of the womb, the wall of the womb. So if a fibroid is growing within the muscle layer, it's called an intramural fibroid, okay? If a fibroid is growing such that it's growing into the, the, the cavity of the womb where the baby sits in, that's called a submucosal fibroid. It's different from the one that's just growing within the muscle layer of the womb. And if you have a fibroid that's growing outside and on the outer surface of the womb, that's called the subserosal fibroid. And this image that I have on the screen should demonstrate that to us. Um, so you've got this one that my cursor is hovering over is the one I've just described as a subserosal fibroid. Then you have the one that's growing within the muscle of the womb, which is an intramural fibroid. And then you have the one that's growing right inside going into the cavity of the womb and that's called the submucosal fiber and so that's that one that my cursor is hanging on or is displaying so i just wanted to make sure that it's clear why is this important it's important because when we talk about the different problems that a fibroid can potentially cause it can depend on the type of the fibroid so is it in one of these different locations so just as an example you can see that the submucosal fibroid that is this one let's indicate so this one where my um cursor is sitting around this submucosal fibroid can grow into the womb cavity and affect either the growth of a pregnancy or even the ability of effect of a pregnancy of a fertilized egg to implant in the first instance. So that can already, you can see how that can cause fertility problems. Um, another example, for instance, is this uh, uh, submucosal fibroid. Now it is growing within the womb cavity, but here it is hanging outside the womb, going into the vaginal canal. So this can obviously cause problems with sexual intercourse, for example, bleeding and pain, are examples of symptoms that such a fibroid can cause. What about other types of fibroids, like the subserosal one that's growing outside? It can't do much damage, can it? Actually, it can. Imagine if this grows to such a large size, it's pressing against other organs within the abdomen or pushing out um, onto the abdominal 
pushing out the abdominal wall. So you can have somebody who's actually not pregnant, but because they've got a very large subserosal fiber, it's really bulky. They look as if they're pregnant, six or nine months pregnant because of a large fibroid. It can also press on organs. For example, the organs closest to the womb at the bladder, that is in, sitting in front of it or the rectum or back passage or anus sitting behind it so imagine if you have big fibroids like this pushing against these things in front or behind they can either cause problems passing urine or problems using the toilet those are also symptoms that women with fibroids can experience they can also cause pain pain because they're just stretching and taking up space within the womb or within the pelvis or the abdomen or they are pressing on nerves so they can cause back pain leg pain pelvic pain they can affect the periods these are some of the symptoms that a woman who has uterine fibroids can experience and this is why it can happen based on the location of the fibroids. So if you're joining in, thank you for popping in. We're talking about shrinking fibroids. We've literally just started and I'm just laying a foundation. I'm just talking about what fibroids are. They are benign growths of the womb, where they are located and how where they are located is important in terms of the problems that they can cause. Can I just use this opportunity to add first uh, at this stage that not all fibroids cause symptoms it's good to go away with that sense um, i know that we're going to be talking about the ones that cause symptoms of course but not all fibroids cause symptoms there are many women who have fibroids they may just be very small fibroids or they may be in such a position that they don't cause any problems they don't cause pain or um, um period problems or affect fertility so you generally don't hear much about it and they just keep an eye on them the doctor just monitors them to check they're not growing in any unusual way and then that's it, they don't have any problems. But we're talking here, what we're looking at is what happens with fibroids that do cause these symptoms. And I've mentioned the um, a, uh, different possible symptoms that fibroids can cause. Please have a look on my playlist on the channel. I haven't um, opened my YouTube screen up yet, so I, I, I can't share the screen. Maybe I'll do that later on in the video. But have a look. If you go to Ask Away Health YouTube channel, we've got a playlist on fibroids and i talk about different things i look at what causes fibroids the symptoms of fibroids the medical surgical and all the different treatment options in dedicated videos so if you really want to sit down and go through and learn about this condition and please go and have a look at that playlist another important uh, important thing to say fibroids are so common if you sit down and look around you you may know somebody who knows somebody who has fibroids they're that common so we say that it can affect um you know up to 30 to 60 percent of women who have fibroids they're most commonly diagnosed between the ages of 30 to 40 years they're more common according to studies in women of African or African Caribbean origin. That's not to say that other women don't experience it, but for some reason, it tends to be more common in women of African or Africa, Afro-Caribbean origin. What causes them were still get different theories that's the best way to put it because if i say oh it's that or it's that then you're going to ask me well what about that person what about that person at the moment the evidence we have we don't know exactly what it is that makes lady a have fibroid and lady b doesn't we know that there are different things that might be related and yes it has to do with hormones it has to do with genetics or your family inheritance it has to do with the environment it has to do with diet and so on all related we cannot at this stage 2022 say that we know exactly what is responsible for fibroids so we're just laying the stage for this discussion when we talk about shrinking fibroids please if you've come or you've got you've gone to see your doctor and you're um you're interested in can i have one pill or one tablet to get rid of this fibroid I want to be very honest and I want to be very truthful that it's unlikely you're going to get that. If we had such a pill, then we, everybody would know about it. That is how common the fibroid problem is. Okay, so just so that we have that at the back of our minds. So we need to be looking at what is it that is available that works and to what degree does it work and how does it work and so on okay so just popping over to the comments section i will be dipping into comments in and out from time to time but hello from empowerment house of the world thank you for joining please let me know if you want to share any thoughts or questions around fibroids always lovely to hear from um 
anyone viewing uh, and the same on the replay please if you have any questions or comments please pop them in the comment section okay let's start with natural um, methods for for shrinking fibroids what are the natural and i think that's what a lot of people want to hear about yes you know that there are medical options yes you know there are surgical options for some reason they may not be for you so what are the natural methods I, I like to discuss them with people who want to talk about them, but I always add the proviso to say, you know what, we haven't got as much evidence about how these things work. I cannot say to you that if you've heard this was good for so so and so person, it's also going to be good for you. We haven't got those studies that indicate to us that if you take it exactly like this, maybe two tablets or two tea bags a day, this is how it's going to work. We don't have that. And this is why it's not so much something that we discuss when you come to modern medicine, if you go to the hospital or the clinic, is not an option that's put forward on the table because there isn't standard evidence. But I know all around, there are people who say, oh, take this pill, take this tablet, do this and do that. And the, the responses and the effects are mixed. They're mixed. Okay, so please be careful. Um, you know, I worry because they, they can be so attractive. The advertisements can be so attractive. Take this tablet daily for three months and your fibroids disappear. And they are, they're quite expensive. I was looking at one yesterday, over $500 um, for course of treatment and they said the evidence for for how this works is on the website and i went to search the website i couldn't find the evidence i wanted to see okay where have where have they given it to people which country if they gave it to people in this country what what happened can can we will it get the same result if you give it to somebody in another location if you give it to somebody who is in this age group 35 and upwards will you have the same result if you give it to somebody who is 20 for example these are the kind of things that studies tell us if somebody who has this particular condition takes this medicine will it work to the same these are the things that we look at in studies and unfortunately um, at the moment a lot of these sort of natural treatments don't have these studies that allow them to have good evidence that you can say okay let's use it and treat fibroids okay but let's talk about them so the first thing i wanted to look at was fruits fruits which fruits shrink fibroids so that's something that's interesting for those of us who are interested uh, who are keen on natural and um, healthy diets and yes we recommend fruits and vegetables really good the, the thing i found is that the what evidence or what little information we have suggests that brightly colored colored fruits brightly colored fruits and that has something to do with some of the anti-inflammatory content that fruits with these colors or that are associated with these colors tend to provide so brightly colored fruits and vegetables can help to reduce inflammation and lower the risk of fibroids so if you're looking at i'm interested in using fruits incorporating fruits in my diet and with a view to improving the um the nature of my fibroids to shrinking or to reducing the effect of the fibroids on symptoms now i would not recommend relying on this alone i think in addition to whatever other treatment that you and your doctor are discussing it can help to reduce inflammation and reduce the risk then you're looking at things like brightly colored fruits so we're talking about red yellow fruits you're talking about um red peppers for example bananas, different melons, different brightly colored fruits, because we know that what provides them the color, the different um, substances, materials in them that gives those colors also have anti-inflammatory properties. Next, let's look at vitamins and supplements. Some studies have told us that taking milk and dairy may help to reduce fibroids. And the reason for that is because they contain high amounts of calcium, magnesium and phosphorus and there are studies that indicate that these nutrients i've just mentioned calcium magnesium and um, phosphorus may help in some way to prevent fibroids from growing so if you're somebody who has fibroids and you're interested in what are the health measures i can incorporate what natural measures i can incorporate in my diet or activity to help to reduce or even reduce reduce the size or even reduce the risk of developing fibroids these um, these products, these uh, calcium, magnesium and phosphorus containing um, supplements or making sure that your diet is rich in milk and dairy containing these things can help. OK, there are also some type of vitamins that are known to help reduce the growth and size of fibroids. And some of this research um, suggests that 
women who have a risk of fibroids okay or who are at risk of developing fibroids that risk may be higher okay it may increase if the levels of things like vitamin d and vitamin a are low so if their vitamin a and d levels are low particularly um sourced from um, animal sources so that's food uh, animal um, um based food that you eat um or dairy you might find that if you have low levels of these vitamins that you might be at a higher risk of developing fibroids so it's really important vitamins have a place they have a role to play so if you're somebody who is not particular in terms of your diet or in terms of supplements you're not particular uh, about the the vitamins that you're consuming please watch just look at that check that um, ideally follow the recommended daily amounts you see so we, we were not saying that we're going to put you on a prescription treatment of xy number of vitamin capsules per day usually we recommend the daily amount that is safe for you to consume and this would help to keep the levels in your body at a quantity or at an amount that will help to minimize the risk of growing or developing fibroids okay now other vitamins that can also have been found to be beneficial are your b vitamins b for bravo b so that can be b1 b6 there's also vitamin e i've mentioned magnesium already and then omega-3 fatty acids which you can find in some types of um, fish but you can also find all of these in supplements so if you're taking them in your diet if your diet is nice nicely structured and planned to contain these things you can also find them in supplements so please don't think it's just um it's just diet but again i want to emphasize that if you want to go into this if this is something that you want to go into i would usually recommend please speak with your doctor first of all let us establish how big are the fibroids let us establish where are the fibroids have a chat with your doctor about the options for treating fibroids and that will depend on the symptoms that you come with the things that are most troublesome that you need to sort out it could be pain it could be um, irregular bleeding it could be um, back pain it could be trouble passing urine or it could be fertility issues and so they look at what are the what are the possible options they can say okay let's do medical options in which case is taking hormone treatments and they're working towards a surgery for example and you want to help the process and you can help the process by taking some of these supplements but please discuss with your doctor make sure that they are aware that you're interested in this supplement so they can advise appropriately especially if you have other medical conditions or if you are on any other medication so that's um that's looking at the role of vitamins now, another thing that's particularly um, popular is tea, tea, and we're referring to particularly green tea. I think green tea tends to be more popular, although I know some people talk about black tea. But in terms of green tea, again, it's an anti-inflammatory property. There's, so there's um, we think, or there's thought to be a bioflavonoid in green tea that may may contribute to reducing the size um, and if you have more than one fiber it may help to reduce the number of fibroids this might be because of its anti-inflammatory property and helping to remove toxins remember we said we don't know exactly what causes fibroids because if you know what's causing it it's easy remove the cause isn't it but we don't know exactly what it is that causes it in one person compared to the other we know certain associations inflammation we have recognized as a possible contributor so if you have things like um the green tea which contain these and bioflavonoids that can help to reduce inflammation they may be able to help help in this direction should you rely on this alone we haven't got the evidence again i support this as measures you can take in addition to other things that you're doing so you may for example have troublesome fibroids because they're painful and bleeding is irregular um, and so your doctor decides to provide you with some hormones that that could be the combined contraceptive pill um, and while you're taking the pill you're also looking at what else can i do what else can i complement this treatment with green tea might be an option we've talked about vitamins those could be options that you can follow for this purpose okay so that's green tea next what about your diet i've talked to, i know i've mentioned a little bit about dairy and milk and all that but diet and what you eat so let's look at what can help in terms of having fibroids the studies suggest that being overweight so we do have studies that suggest that being overweight right can increase the risk of having fibroids now i know you're going to say to me 
But my friend so so and so is slim. She's been slim since forever, but and she has fibroids. I get it. This is again why I say we don't know everything there is to know about fibroids. Okay, but we do have studies that indicate that being overweight and having excess fat cells because these cells make a lot of estrogen. So here is the magic word: estrogen, hormone estrogen, can contribute towards the development of fibroids. So it's it is it does mean that losing weight can help to reduce the development or the growth of fibroids so we're interested in weight loss weight loss of course will in it involves lots of different things so it involves the eating the right food and then the exercise the combination okay and so what you need to do is look at what best suits you your lifestyle because you're looking at something that's sustainable but it's also good to know what kind of foods should you avoid what kind of foods should you just do away so it's important to say that for foods that are helpful for fibroids, you're looking at fiber rich foods, unprocessed. If you want to look at diet to help reduce or shrink fibroids, avoid anything processed or minimize as much as possible. So we're looking at fiber rich, unprocessed foods. It will help to lose weight because it helps in your digestion, but it also helps to balance hormones. Okay, it also helps to manage the appetite so you're less hungry quickly because you know that a lot of these processed foods contain so much sugar, so much carbohydrates. If you have it, it gives you a sugar rush, and then you have the dip and you're hungry barely one or two hours after having these processed foods. With the unprocessed high fiber foods, they tend to keep you full longer, so you can, you're can you less likely to, to nibble or graze or binge. You can wait a few hours before having the next meal. Those are the benefits. So that's a way that they can pre prevent excessive weight. So we're talking about vegetables and fruit again. They can be the raw or the cooked variety, dried fruit if you like, whole grains, and um, brown rice, beans, lentils, um, whole grain and pasta, so not the not the type that is not the processed white bread or um, pasta, and using fresh and dried herbs. So we're looking at natural. So natural produce um, usually will help for for um, foods that you're going to use for losing weight. Now it's a good place to add something about exercise because I think that also contributes to losing weight. Apart from exercise, helping you to feel to boost your mood because don't forget that somebody um with fibroids and i know this because we, we you know we talk a lot we talk a lot i know a um, number of women who have fibroids and a lot of things um that can happen that can affect your mental health are things like the pain um preventing you from going to work or the very heavy bleeding flooding your clothes um the pain in your abdomen or pain during the periods pain in the back pain in the legs and what about the other problems like constipation? And so the day-to-day -day issues that people experience living with fibroids. But in addition, in addition, there's also the possibility that um, you're trying to get pregnant and you've been struggling with this for some time. So all this can take a toll on one's mood. That's what I'm trying to say. And the point is that exercise can help to improve the mood. You're trying to sort out the fibroids, but the benefit of exercise is apart from helping to control the weight, it also contributes to improving your um, your mood to deal with things better because it can be quite dismal and challenging going through um, experiencing fibroids and trying to struggle to, to decide how to deal with them, how to improve things with them. Um, so let us have a um so we're looking at i know there are a couple of comments i will come i will look at the comments i just want to make sure that we get as much detail i'm going to cover sort of some of the natural options and then we can have a look at comments before we think about um other things so we talked about the foods that are useful for fibroids i think it's also useful let me just mention it here let's talk since you're talking about food i'm going to emphasize it so avoid what should we avoid now alcohol red meat smoking these things can increase the risk or studies have suggested that suggested that there is an increased association increased risk when associated with these things red meat and um, smoking alcohol so if you know that you, you have fibroids and you are you, you take a lot of any of these items I think it's reasonable to think about cutting them down and um, it can apart from the other benefits in terms of your heart health in terms of general health there is also suggestion that it can help to improve and shrink the fibroids. 
other things we've talked about high sugar levels so eating excess um refined carbohydrates and sugary foods they can push your sugar levels up so we're looking at things like white rice pasta flour so all things made with white flour and pastries and all those things biscuits and all that soda and soft drinks and high sugar fruit juices and all that um, cereals watch cereals that say oh they're healthy but they've got lots and lots of sugar so make sure you're looking at the information and uh, information on the back of the cereal box to see how much how much sugar actually is in them even though they're, they're called healthy and um, i've talked about things like cakes and cookies and donuts and pastries chips and crackers all these things are not the friend of somebody with fibroids if you're looking at what to take okay because you want to um, reduce fibroids okay so let's just take a quick look at the comments thank you so much for joining me if this is useful please like this um please like this video um because i really want to make sure it's a really it's a condition that's you know lots of women struggle with and can be quite distressing so please give the video a like let's push it up in the algorithm for youtube so that many people um, ex uh, many people get a benefit from it. So let's have a look at some comments. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much for Empowerment House of the World. Thank you so much for joining. So we have a comment. Hello, doctor. I'm 45. According to the scan, my uterus has elongated and fibroids are too big that doctors, oh, sorry, let me just put this. Doctors uh, suggested a uterus removal in the traditional way. What do you suggest? Um, so that's from Sima. Thank you for sharing this with us. And you also tell us I am on the pill and painkiller at the moment due to heavy bleeding. My um, hemoglo your hemoglobin count reduced to 4.3 and iron 4, vitamin D, 25. Quality of life completely lost. Um, so I, I understand what you're what you're saying and i'm so sorry because it can be so uncomfortable so um you know when i when i hear things like this how much this condition can affect a woman so i'm so sorry sima that you're going through all this now it's a bit difficult for me to say you know what do i suggest your doctor um has a much much better idea than i do about how how severe or how large your fibroids are. So you've given me a sense of how badly it's affecting your life. I can appreciate that. Um, your, do your doctor is in a better position, and I'm referring to your gynecologist, is in a better position to advise what the best forms of treatment will be. And, but I would say that if we're talking about very large fibroid and it's causing such, it's effect affecting your blood levels to this extent, I will be going for modern medical or surgical methods or alternatives to surgery. And so I'm, I was going to talk about this towards the end, but let's just put it in here since we're, you know, trying to look at this specific situation. Um, so I would look at, uh, this is, um, this is the image on, so this is the image that's on, on our thumbnail for this um, video, but I just want to make it so that let's just have a look so that we're all seeing an example, just as an example if one is dealing with a very large, enlarged womb. Um, we don't have studies to indicate that natural methods, um, for example, the vitamins or the diet, um, castor oil, for example, turmeric and all these things. We haven't got the evidence or even tra tra traditional Chinese medicine. I know that there's some um, measures, some herbs and supplements that are used by traditional Chinese medicine um, um, uh, practitioners for treating these conditions now they may help towards reducing symptoms how well do they shrink the fibroids again that was what i started with that the challenge is we haven't got so much of studies indicating to us how effectively they do these things for women and even if they do it for a group of women in a particular area can that same activity be transferred somewhere else that's what studies tell us that's how we know that we can take this and so it's going to give me this a similar effect so it's a bit difficult, but if we're looking at fibroids that are about this size about, and causing this degree of problems, then the options are about removing the fibroid. So that's what they call, or that's what we call myomectomy, removal of the fibroid. Now, there's some treatments, there's some medicines that can be given to shrink the size of the fibroid to help to reduce the size of the fibroid before surgery. Or some people might be given hormone like the pill, for example, to manage heavy bleeding before the surgery. 
Um, and surgery can also, apart from removing the fibroid, surgery might also be a hysterectomy that's removal of the womb and i don't know um Sim, uh, sima you've mentioned some details and i'm not asking you to give us any information in a public space like this and again why i'm careful about providing the advice and um, if you finished your family or if a woman has completed her family um and is not you know not about to have any more children then it may be that the removal of the womb itself is the, is is the option because at this stage you're saying um, at this age, for example, above the age of 45, heading towards uh, menopause or the change, we're saying that it's your, your your quality of life will improve if the womb is removed. So that could be what your doc doctor is talking about, if that's the traditional way that we're talking about. So that would be a method that could be used. Now, for somebody who is younger, there, there are other methods. So let's go into that. Let's use this opportunity as we answer this question to then go into the other measures. So we know that surgical methods are present. I've just talked about the myomectomy where the womb is, re uh, sorry, the fibroid itself is removed or the fibroids can be removed. And that's sort of like if I use a very crude way, it's just by cutting away the fibroid from the tissue and then stitching together the area that the fibroid has been cut away from. But they can also do things and with modern technology now, we can use um, ultrasound that use an ultrasound focus so that while the surgeon is working, they're not working um, blind, they can use ultrasound to actually identify different fibroids and remove them with that with minimal invasion so not big cuts into the abdomen or, or the womb and that can be a method that's useful for somebody who is younger and hasn't yet started their family they haven't yet got children so you're minimizing any any cuts to the womb and ensuring that the womb is still uh, still functional the womb can still carry a pregnancy but you're just removing the elements like the fibroids that are causing the problem there's also there are also different therapies that use heat sources and cold sources so there's something called myolysis where they use heat to remove the fibroid to melt away the fibroid they can also use uh, cryolysis sorry cryomyolysis which is freeze therapy that again re removes the fibroid now these these methods the advantage can be that you're not it's it's minimally invasive and what that means is not not as invasive as going to cut open uh, a person's abdomen or pelvis or cut open the womb to to remove the fibroids and again depends on where the fibroids are located so those options are available in terms of surgery but there's also uterine fibroid embolization or uterine artery embolization which is a method that blocks the blood supply of the uh, to the to the fibroid Okay, so again, that's that's not doesn't involve surgery, and what happens is uh, uh, the element or the material that's going to block the blood supply is injected through one of your blood vessels, and that blood uh, that material travels into towards the womb, targeting the fibroid, the blood vessel that supplies the fibroid in order to block that blood supply, which then eventually the fibroid will die off. So that's another method. It's not surgical, um, but it is done by expert um, radio um, um, specialists in radiology and because they have the training to be able to identify the right vessels and use ultrasounds and different me um, measures. Usually the stay in hospital is not very long. Recovery is quite quick. And the evidence is that it does provide um, good treatment for people with fibroids. Now, I don't want to go into town too much about this because I do have two, I think, two videos on that same playlist I mentioned at the beginning talking about uterine fibroid embolization or uterine artery embolization. So it's worthwhile going to have a look at that, whether it suits you. Um, and of course, these are things that should be discussed with your partner. So um, I think I, um, so I think that covers... Um, Thank you, Sima. I'm, I'm, I, I hope that's helped a little bit. I'm just hesitant. And the only reason I'm hesitant is because I don't know all your history. If you wanted us to go into this further, please, you can you can use the link. I'm going to put the link in this video. Use our email health information service. And we can really go to details, look at everything, look at the size. If you've got any scans and things, we can look at them with you and then provide some sort of more guidance additional guidance to what your doctor is providing to help you so that you make the right decision well thank you so much for sharing that with us i know it's a difficult place and i do wish you all the um, all the very best so 
these are some of the things that we're talking about when we're looking at shrinking um, fibroids. Now, we've touched the surgical. I want to just touch the medical as well. Um, and I've mentioned it um, as we've talked about this. Medical treatments can include things like the pill. Now, there is controversy about that, um, as you probably are aware. We've talked about estrogen. The pill also contains estrogen. So, of course, there's the argument, well, doctor, why would you give estrogen or something containing estrogen when, you're to, when we know that estrogen may contribute to the growth or development of fibroids? Why would you give estrogen? So it's that very valid question. So, first of all, lots of women use the combined pill that contains estrogen and progesterone. Not all of them develop fibroids. And this is why I'm saying that it's fibroids is still such a complex thing that we're trying to work out, we're trying to understand. So not, not, not all of them will go ahead to develop fibroids. So if you want to use that argument against using the pill, it doesn't really stand water or it doesn't really hold water. And what we found is that for somebody who's having very, very heavy bleeding, irregular bleeding because of the fibroids in the initial period, initially you might start with the pill to see if that will just help to calm the bleeding down because the pill the hormones in the pill just help to switch off the natural estrogen that the body and other hormones that the body is producing so that any bleeding really is just coming from the effect of the um, the hormones in the pill and they tend to neutralize themselves so that that argument that they might increase the development of, of um, fibroids that's still something to look at. But I do take it on board. I do take it as a big concern. In fact, last week, this is a topic on our live stream. We're talking about um, concern from women raised by a Twitter user that, oh, doctors just put women on the pill or just, you know, without checking, without going to do tests. And we went to, we talked at length about this situation and said, it doesn't hold for everyone. It is appropriate that you do tests to work out what is causing a problem. And everyone is different. Um, some conditions are more common in certain groups of women. So a woman who comes in her 20s or 30s having period problems all of a sudden, she should have tests. But for a young girl who's sort of 11 or 12 who's just started her period with heavy bleeding, we're not looking at that person having fibroids or PCOS or endometriosis at that stage. Remember, I said at the beginning, these things are more likely to happen in women. We diagnose them more often between the ages of 30 and 40. Now, I'm not, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that so a teenager cannot have fibroids. In fact, I've, got, I've come across a really interesting case, and I'm going to do a video on that case because I think it helps us to learn about these things called fibroids. And as a doctor, and when a young woman comes to me, she's 13, 14, very, very irregular, heavy bleeding, tummy pain, fibroids and you know, other gynecological issues should also be part of what we think about in, you know you know not just appendix or not just um abdominal migraine or not just um you know um infections and all, all that we we have to think about so many different causes uh, but i think it's really important to say that in such women or such young girls the top of the list of things happening is not fibroids and that's generally why you might find that they, we start them on the on the combined pill without really doing any tests but it's for a short period of time and if it's not getting better the intention is not to keep her on the pill for endless years the intention is for a couple of months and let's see if it's not getting better then we have to look at what else could be causing this problem so that's just an aside i didn't want to start talking about that all over again we discussed that last week anyway so and apart from the pill there is um and i've, I've referenced it already in this video uh, there is a drug called Zoladex that some women um, who have large fibroids may be given. It's an injection that you get um, every month um, to help to shrink or, or reduce the bulk of a fibroid, especially if um, surgery is planned. So that helps to reduce the size of the fibroid so that when surgery does happen, less complications, less bleeding, it's easier for the surgeon to see what they're doing and help to manage the, the operation better so that what they're doing is removing the fibroid and, and do minimal damage to the womb, especially if a lady still wants to have children. So that I, I wanted to cover that and I didn't want us to take too much time on this topic. I promise that we're going to um, look at shrinking fibroids. And really, this, this topic was prompted by a um, one of my viewers. You know that our live classes at the moment are dedicated to questions. So this was a question that came from a viewer who wanted to know, doctor, what can I take to shrink fibroids? 
and I thought it's really important to have this discussion and to educate people because it's not just, well, go on, take this tablet X, Y, Z and voila, no. Um, it's important to have the discussion. What is the person's medical background? What else is going on? Um, how old are they? Have they had children? Where is the fibroid? Is it more than one fibroid? How large is it? And so some of the things that I've touched on here are so relevant. Um, another thing I didn't want to forget, um, I'm just going looking through my list. We've talked about traditional Chinese medicine. Um, so that's important. If you're someone who wants to go into look at that, and um, there are suggestions that some women have found it helpful. What I would recommend is make sure that whoever it is, the practitioner, it is someone that is registered. Um, so be careful spending your money when you're not sure. Um, and always, if you decide you want to choose a particular form of treatment, let your own your doctor be aware. Okay, uh, and then go for checkups. I, I think I've heard horrible stories about somebody who's taken, decided to take, spend six months drinking some herbs and supplements. And these things can contribute to other medical problems. Some of them can interfere with other medicines that you're taking. Apart from that, some of them could actually go on to cause damage to organs, especially the liver and the kidney and lead to kidney failure and the complications from that. And that's why I, I don't recommend sort of going off and just focusing on that it's important that you're working with your medical practitioner you might need to do some blood tests to check your kidney function and that this is not these those herbs and supplements or medicines um provided by the um, alternative care practitioners or complementary care practitioners that they're not causing any damage to your organs it's important to keep track and repeat a scan if it, are the is, are the fibroids changing are they reducing in size um are the symptoms improving these are things these are key issues to consider so it's, it's it's important to be aware of this when you're spending money but as well as your own health it's really important um something came into my head just and it's gone away i hope i remember before we finish this and um, the other thing as well is remember your blood pressure blood pressure is important um there is a study, I think that's from a Dutch study that suggested there might be a link between high blood pressure and fibroids. I think that's what I wanted to mention, actually, when I was talking about some of these um, alternative medicines, that some of them can affect your kidneys. And if you're somebody who already has high blood pressure, or has a risk of having high, high blood pressure. And don't forget that women of African or Afro-Caribbean origin, there can be an increased risk of high blood pressure. So please, it's really important that you're not just taking these things because you've seen them online or because somebody friend said, oh, this did the best. You need to be sitting down, go through the evidence, sit with somebody who has the knowledge like your doctor, do some research and check, will this be of benefit to me, to me? And before you make your decision, and we're happy to help Ask Away Health. What we're here for is helping people make the right decisions. We've got an email health information service. I tend not to, not to answer some of these dedicated questions on YouTube because that's a public space for confidentiality reasons. And we, we, we all we want to do is provide information to guide you so that you can work with your local practitioner, your own doctor who knows you, who has your medical information to make the right decisions. So in terms of blood pressure, be careful with foods that contain a lot of salt or sodium. So potato chips and um, all these processed foods. Again, make sure you're checking your blood pressure regularly. And then exercise is also something that's important to, to do. Okay, right. So shrinking fibroids, what else? So we've covered natural treatments. We've covered medical treatments. We've covered surgical treatments. The other natural treatment that shrink fibroids is menopause. Yes, menopause. Remember at the beginning that we said, um, <laughs> we don't treat everyone with fibroids. And sometimes fibroids, um, they have no symptoms. In fact, many times they have no symptoms. For some women, some women are fortunate enough not to experience um, any problem with their fibroids. So. The fibroids, as I said, may be few in number or so small that they do not cause any symptoms and so on. And all you do is just keep an eye on them. What we found is that for majority of women with fibroids, by the time they enter menopause, and again, you can bring the argument in of the effect of hormones because that's what changes, isn't it, with menopause? Um, the reduction, the reduced 
levels of estrogen those fibroids begin to shrink so that is another method or another measure by which fibroids a woman who suffered with fibroids or had trouble with fibroids may get some relief i'm not advocating that you should wait until you're menopausal so there are so many different options that you should really be sitting down to talk with your doctor um, and i know that some of the challenges as well are also about uh, available specialists in the area where you stay or the cost of these procedures those are those are real challenges that we have to we have to deal with and and sometimes you're looking at what is available to me here and what is the, what's the safest thing that i can do to treat this condition okay so i think we've covered i'm just having a quick look at the comments to make sure i've not missed anything i haven't so thank you so much for guys who've um, joined in the discussion today who've asked the questions Sima in particular thank you so much and i hope that was helpful to you um yesterday i published a video on watermelon in pregnancy you know that our channel is dedicated to everything to do with women's health so i do so sort of I pop in from anything to do with contraception. One day I'm talking about fibroids, another day I'm talking about pregnancy, the other day to make sure that different aspects of a woman's life um, are covered. So yes, I did publish that one on watermelon. It's a short video, but really quite important, particularly for those who are sitting in warm climates at the moment and who are pregnant. And I'm thinking, how do I keep myself hydrated? Oh, watermelon, fantastic, yes. Or just watch out a few things so please go and watch that video and, and like it um, and let me know what your comments are if you enjoyed the video if you found it useful please share with me okay guys we're going to round up here thank you so much for watching i think I had quite a few people joining in today's segment i'm really i really hope that you took something away from it and if you want to ask any more questions if you want to ask any more questions oh gosh hi this is hi clarabel this is the lady who asked the question i i forgot to put up my youtube um i forgot to put up my the my youtube screen i would have shared the questions i'm sorry but well, hi clarabel i've i've um we've been talking about this for about 45 minutes so you can watch this on the replay um without knowing your own medical background specifically i can't go into detail but we have the email health information service that you can use to ask specific questions as it relates to you but i have touched on some natural methods i have touched on some surgical methods i've touched on some alternatives to surgery and i've touched on um, medical methods that people use to shrink fibroids. I think the most important thing is to say there isn't one single tablet that you can say, okay, you know, take this like paracetamol, for example, for some mild headache. There isn't a single tablet you can say, okay, take this and then it starts to shrink the fibroids. There are different things. Um, and it may be that what one needs to have a combination of a natural and medical method or a surgical method. Um, and use a natural method to maintain good health. I, I also wanted to mention, and I forgot to say that earlier, that fibroids can happen again. Fibroids can, so after treatment is what I mean, I'm sorry. So it may be after surgery, even after surgery, fibroids may happen again. And that's what I'm saying about how complex fibroids are. Fibroids are so <laughs> complex. There's still so much that we don't know about them so please i would encourage you clarabel and thank you thank you for the question um i'm fine as well thank you but thank you for creating the space for us to discuss this question please go back and watch the replay i talked a lot about um, um different measures and i hope it's helpful if you still have any questions use the email information service to um you know to to ask and then we'll try as much as we can to help to contribute so guys i am going to round things up here thank you so much for joining me i hope you have a lovely weekend and um, next week friday i'm not sure what, what we're discussing i haven't planned it yet um so it'll it'll depend on what questions come in or if there's something interesting that's trending or if you have it if you have a suggestion send me a message on one of my community posts and then we can put together a video class on that subject please don't forget to like this video please subscribe to the channel we are growing and i'm really thrilled that we're making some impact with what we're doing and it's all because of you guys so thank you so much have a great weekend and i'll see you again soon